Greetings all. Well, with the uh, gas pipeline hacking, and I did a bit of a show about sustainable living the other day, I've got a lot of questions about electric cars. I'm leaning here on my Chevy Bolt, my uh, electric car. Um, uh, I, I'm aware that most Americans are not at all familiar with electric vehicles. We've been driving gas cars for so long and our minds are very much uh, geared into that whole idea. The electric car is different. Your life will probably be different if you own one and it's a good chance pretty soon you will because you won't even be able to buy uh, a Chevrolet that's powered by gas uh, unless it's used in uh, only about 14 more years. Time is coming at us. Um, the gas cars going away. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the electric cars, um, just so maybe other people would be a little more comfortable with them. Um, I love them, okay, I, I really do. Uh, but I serviced electric forklifts for many years when I was in industry, and I thought they were great. Uh, the electric cars are even better because we could all use them everywhere we go. Um, first thing first, if you own an electric car, you're probably used to thinking, oh, my gas gauge is getting low if you got a gas car and I got to make it to a gas station and so on and so forth. Well, that's not part of the mindset when it comes to an electric car um, because you can't just, you know, pull up somewhere and stick a nozzle in it and fill it up and four minutes later you're back down the road again. It takes a while to charge one of these things, okay? Um, the chargers that we use on electric cars are in three classes okay there's the level one charger that's the 441 like Chevrolet owns for instance they have one at the dealership it will do this car in one hour and 20 minutes if the battery was flat dead now if you own an electric car you don't ever let the battery go flat dead okay but that's the figure the level 2 charger, which is the one I've got over here that we're hooked up to at this moment right now, um, this is powered by 220. In my case, it's run by 220 from the sun because I'm using an integrated solar charger on the car. Uh, and this will do my car in 9 hours from a completely dead battery. Okay, so here at the home, if I had a dead car and I plugged it in and went to bed at night, when I got finished with breakfast in the morning, the car would be ready to go. Um, uh, the rules are, when you own one of these things, you really want to own the charger too, whether it's solar or whether it's hooked to the grid. It doesn't matter, but you will need to own a charger, and you're going to want to hook the car to the charger every time you're not using the car. This is the way you live when you own one of these things. Things always plugged in if you're not driving it. The only time it's not plugged in is when you're heading down the road with the automobile. Usually just by keeping this car plugged in all the time, we don't need to worry. Occasionally, uh, it gets really cloudy. I don't have extra juice to share for the car. And so then we have to come up with something else. We either charge it from the grid you know, which is a reasonable idea because I am grid tied with this system and I can flip over to the grid if I want to. Um, we can take it down uh, to the Chevy dealer because when the Chevy sold us the car, they have a level one charger and they said, hey, if it needs juice, bring it on down. Now, you know, there weren't very many electric cars on this island when we bought this, so. There is going to come a time where Chevy will not be able to say that anymore. But for the meantime, it's the Wild West with electric cars and we get free electricity from Chevrolet. If we want to drop the car off, have them plug it in, then go across the street, go shopping at the store or something. You know, it's fairly convenient because Chevy's located downtown in Hilo. Um, yeah, the other option, of course, is uh, that with the car, we were given a little charge card, plastic card with a strip that allows us to use the chargers at uh, Home Depot or at Target. And so Ellen shops at Target frequently and will go down and put the card in there, hook the car up, and uh, she gets two hours of free electricity charged from that level two charger. It's the same level as the one we got here at the house. Okay. So 
that's another option. You know, there are chargers set up around the island in various places. Uh, the power company's got some they put up. They want uh, money for theirs. You're going to be paying them. Uh, but anyway, the point being, you never let these things run down. You never sit around thinking, oh, I, I need to find a charger somewhere. You know, no, if you're, if you're driving it to work and back, for instance, the most la rational thing is that you have a charger at work and you have a charger at home. And so you get to work, you plug the thing in, you get home, you plug the thing in. And that's kind of how this will work. Now, because we're going to convert into almost entire electrical and hydrogen, probably powered vehicles within the next decade, you will start seeing charging facilities showing up everywhere. They'll end up being mandated by rules and laws, local ordinance and so on. Uh, right now, uh, for whatever size parking lot here in Hawaii, you're supposed to have you know one charger for every thousand square foot or something like that. Um, anyway, um, you will be seeing more and more and more and more of these chargers. Um, and this car will go, you know, 280 to 300 miles or so uh, between charges, um, it, which for me means I can drive all the way across the island over the Kona and then turn around and come back again and uh, still have enough juice to make it back to the house and plug it in. So here in Hawaii, these are very practical. And as you go to the smaller islands, they're even more practical. Because this is the big one. we got 4,000 square miles to drive around on here. Uh, but, you know, they may not be the hot setup for a coast-to-coast -coast vacation at this point. Right now, I highly recommend any family who has one of these things also probably has a gas car. And I have this gas car sitting next to me over here just in case for some reason we need it. Mostly I keep it just if Ellen takes the electric, I have something I can use to go to the post office with. Uh, we own it, so I'm driving it. Uh, it will be replaced with another electric eventually, um, a pickup when that happens. But, um. So sitting here in the driver's seat, looking at the dashboard right now, um, up there in the upper left, you see it says max 265, and then it says 225 below it, and below that it says min 184. Okay, so what that is is sort of the electric car's version of a fuel gauge. Again, this takes a little getting used to um, because it's based on an algorithm, and it depends really on whether you're going up a mountain or going down a mountain. Uh, it's going to change under conditions. So this car will recharge itself when it's going downhill. Um, put it in the low range on the car. It will go ahead and turn the motor into a generator as you start to come downhill or you start to brake the car. Anytime where the car is uh, going into a deceleration mode, um, it, 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 it will go ahead and, and charge the battery back up. And there, are, there are times when I've driven up the mountain to uh, Volcanoes National Park and say I left here and it said I had 200 miles range. I'd get up the top of the mountain and it'd tell me I burned up 50 miles worth of my range climbing the mountain even though it was less than 20 miles up. But then I turn around later and I come back down the mountain and it recharges on the way down so that I have come back to the house and had exactly the same amount of power in the car after doing about a 45 mile trip um, because of the up and down factor. Uh, it's something to bear in mind. That and there is no such thing as an exact figure on these fuel gauges or battery gauges. They're an algorithm and they depend on conditions and it'll change at the drop of a hat. Okay, that's important to know. They are very quiet. Um, they have put a noisemaker in here under 14 miles an hour so people can actually hear the car uh, when it's moving. But I've had questions about whether these are powerful enough or not. And I'm telling you, they are really powerful. Really, really powerful. Especially from, from a standing start. The torque is amazing on them. 
Um, I'm told by Chevy that this thing will um, jump the new Camaro out of the hole, and I believe it. Um, and you can surely lay a lot of rubber with one of these if you're uh, crazy with the foot pedal. Here. All right, now we're pulling out on the main highway. I can give her a little bit. All right, now we watch here at 13 miles an hour. Check this out. Yeah, like that. Breaking the speed limit. Pretty impressive. Well, one of the more interesting features on these electric cars is the one-pedal driving mode. I have the car set right now so that if I take my foot off the accelerator, the car brakes. Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah, if you uh, learn to use that right, it's a little bit like using uh, reduction gears on a stick transmission where you would downshift, you know? Um, yeah, it works a little bit like that. I don't need to use the brakes. Um, the brakes are irrelevant almost on this car if you learn how to use the one-pedal driving mode, which basically means one hand on the steering wheel, one foot on the gas pedal or off the gas pedal. So, aside from the fact that the IRS had a tax rebate on these things, and so I got money back on my taxes because we bought an electric car, um, I don't know whether that is still existing right now, but I'm positive there will be some more legislation in that regard coming forward. Um, I would think that that will happen again. So, when you're calculating how expensive these things are, you really need to look at whatever rebates are available. Uh, Chevrolet had one, the tax man had one at the time. Um, and then you have to calculate how much you save on the gasoline you're not burning. Okay, that, So that's important uh, a lot. Now for us, um, it's kind of difficult calculation because I'm using the sun and we paid quite a bit to put the system up here. Although the math is there, you can do it. Um, what I've seen as average price of electricity across the United States as compared to gasoline, if you own an electric car in the five years time, seven years time you own it, I can't quite remember, uh, you, you should save about $7,500 on fuel. So there's one discount that you can apply. The other is, is on maintenance costs. These things have almost no moving parts. I mean, fluids in these amount to the stuff you squirt on the windshield, okay? Um, there's no transmission in this car. It has no differential. There is no um, uh, <clears throat> well, basically, the car only has a fraction of the moving parts that a gas auto would have. It's minuscule by comparison. So maintenance costs are probably about $5,000 lower on these. Um, also, so there's a few things you have to look at when you're trying to figure out, oh, it seems expensive. Well, subtract the gas you would have spent, you know, as compared to the electricity. Subtract the maintenance costs you would have had on the gas-powered car. Um, as for me, I just grin every time I'm going up and down the road, and I know this thing runs on the sun. I don't need the oil men, you know, to do this. Uh, I have completely removed myself from that whole ball of wax where we're tied to oil companies, got to go to the filling station. Sometimes I feel a little sad as I drive by filling stations here. I, I look and I see people all lined up. That's, I mean, a great American social event, you know, well... I don't get to partake in it anymore unless I bring the other car. Uh, you know, I just drive right by these places as if they're irrelevant. They don't matter anymore. Yep, it's all changing. It's going to change fast. Um, and you will probably need to develop a new mindset about vehicles as you switch to electric cars. It's not going to be the same as it used to be. That's probably the easiest and simplest way I can put it. You will develop new habits. Um, you'll like it, trust me. Having an electric car is not an inconvenience by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you can run these out of gas or out of electricity, and if you do that, 
uh, you're going to need a tow truck <laughs> because you, you can't, you know, just get a gallon of gas and pour it into one of these. If you ran the thing flat out, you're in trouble. So if you're not the kind of person that has that mindset, you know, of keeping things maintained, keeping things plugged in, making sure you did this or that, um, you might not like an electric car. You know, we have to remember to plug it in. I've just come back from the post office while filming this, and um, I'm going to pull it up here in the garage. I'm going to hook it up. We got 85% of the Tesla power wall is now filled up. Uh, we're well, about 10:30 in the morning or so here. Probably by uh, 11 o'clock, 11:30, the house will be completely charged, and so all power after that is excess. And I either have to let it run back up the grid. Uh, dry a load to close or plug in the electric car and charge the car up. Aloha folks, uh, just another note on the electric cars and how much I like them. I'm telling you, you're going to love these electric cars. Later.